Can everyone hear me? Yeah, I've got quite a loud voice, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, so yes, I'm Vicky. I'm just going to talk a bit about public engagement. I'm really sorry in advance because I tend to walk around a lot when I talk. So <laughs> um, let's start with that. So all I'm going to talk about, it's going to be quite quick, is my approach at Colchester Archaeological Trust to engagement. It's by no means the gold standard. It's just what we do. Um, I think there's a couple of things that we do really well. Obviously, there's always ways to improve. But just as sort of like a jumping off point for us to discuss what's working well, we're just going to start with us. Um, and then also I'll bring in a couple of examples from elsewhere, things that I've seen online that look really good. Obviously, there's tons of stuff to choose from. So I've just picked a few examples of things that we don't do. And then a little short bit of discussion, I think, because we're probably running a little bit late. Um, so firstly, you'll see a lot of pictures of me in this presentation. I'm so sorry in advance, but I'm, apparently I'm the only person that likes to take pictures at the Trust. <laughs> um, so a little bit about me just before we get into it. So I'm really interested in engagement, especially at the moment. Obviously, all the talks we've had today is so important that we try and engage people with our archives, sort of move it or lose it, because otherwise they just sort of sit there. No one's that interested and they gather lots of dust. So I'm really interested in how we can get them out there into the community. Before I was a senior post assistant, I went to university in Southampton. I volunteered in Tudor House Museum and then worked at um, the Sea City Museum, Titanic Museum, both of which I did a lot of visitor engagement, so object handling tables. I wrote a few exhibitions and a few internships that I did, kind of caught the bug there. Um, I also got forced into social media, which was not a choice and I'm not very good at it, but I do try, <laughs> so that happened. Um, I then dug for Oxford Archaeology South, um, for a while and I really enjoyed that before I returned to Essex where I'm originally from and now I work in the office where it's a lot warmer so I do enjoy that too. And this is my role now, again lots of pictures of me, I'm so sorry. Uh, my role, it's one of those sort of small unit kind of roles where you do a little bit of everything, everyone's roles kind of overlap. So I manage the volunteer and work experience program and the other half of my role is archive management. So I kind of, without meaning to, put myself right in the perfect place for engagement because I work with volunteers, lots of students, and also I manage our finds in the archiving store, relatively successfully subtypes. <laughs> so talking about what we do, there are a few things. Feel free to put your hands up if you want to ask anything. Firstly, we publish our reports. I feel like that's fairly standard and most people do it. Um, ours are online on this website here. They're all for free, there's no pay barrier. I feel like that's a pretty simple first step for just making your archives more accessible, putting the reports online. Just a, just a nice jumping off point. Um, I do get questions from people where they might not know what the reports mean, because obviously it's aimed a little bit higher than maybe the general public, but obviously that starts conversations. People might ask about certain archives, where they are, what's in them, what am I talking about, etc. Um, so that's a a nice little jumping off point. Next thing is research. Obviously, we've already talked a little bit about universities today. One thing we do try to do is support people that want to do university projects. So if people want to come into our archives, um, borrow things from our archives, get involved with our archives, then obviously we're going to be as supportive as possible of that. Um, at the moment, I'm in talks with one of our local universities about how we can better engage some of the students. I kind of was worried it wasn't going to be a possibility because they don't study archaeology at our local university, but apparently the history department are really interested. So that's sort of a way that we can maybe move forward in that direction, and I'm really keen to do that. Next thing is the volunteer program. That's the big one that we do. I think that that's something that we do really well. Um, our volunteer program, it, it, it came into fruition far before me, before my time. And we've got a lot of volunteers who are veteran volunteers, I would call them, who since the 80s and 90s have been coming in regularly volunteering. They know their stuff more than I do sometimes, <laughs> but they are brilliant. And we do our best to engage them with archives by, they do a lot of fines processing and fines washing and marking. But the key bit is obviously the education behind that is talking about the sites that they're working on. I, I try and unite people with sites that they're interested in because it, it tends to tends to work better. So if someone's lived in a certain area, I try and have them work on that site. It, it just seems to work well, makes sense to me. Um, 
That's what I said, marking and also environmental sampling, which is something I thought no one would ever want to get involved in, but apparently volunteers love to do environment. <laughs> um, we also, as part of that, do lots of training. And I think that's the real key bit here is making it educational, informing people why we do what we do. Um, volunteers also get an archive tour, normally more than one. Um, and they normally last a lot longer than normal tours because the volunteers want to know every single archive that's in the store. And, oh, I lived here and my son went to school next to there. And, you know, it, that's really important, I think. Uh, this is the training day we did early in the year. And we're about to run a, a winter one. Obviously, no one's wearing coats there. I think we'll be wearing coats at the next one. Um, but we had specialists talk to them about different finds, different specific archives. Um, oh, I hate how the G's drop down there, I'm so sorry. Um, but also about different things that we do on site, illustration, um, pottery reconstruction, etc. So we do our best to sort of educate volunteers who then go off and tell their friend, their husband, their sister, their child about what we do and what we have and what we found. And it's sort of that word of mouth exposure, I think that's really important. Oh, we also do some site visits as well. Um, that's something that I brought in recently. It, it's a little bit difficult to organise sometimes, but I think just giving people the practical element of what the site looks like as well, so that when we're talking about archives and I say, OK, so this is feature 21, and they go, what's a feature? And we go on to site and I go, this is a feature. You know, this, is what, this is what I'm talking about. This ditch here, this is the feature. So... I think this is like a holistic way of in, engaging the volunteers. We also have work experience. So this summer I sort of um, maybe took on too many work experience students. I went a little bit mad. But uh, year 10 to year 13, so s school and college age, um, rather than university, because like I say, we're sort of working on that at the moment, um, tried to engage sort of the younger people with um, their local archives. So. Some of these students, they've all given permission to have these photos up there. So just come back to that photo question. Um, they were all wonderful. And a lot of them went to certain schools that had had archaeological work done by us. So it's great. So I had them do research on the site, pull the archive out. They were going, this is amazing. This is my school. And then they would write a little bit of information about it. And we post it on our social media. So they were really enjoying it. They, told, they went back to school and told everyone about it, which again is amazing, and then they posted it online to make it even more accessible, trying to engage sort of the general public. Um, and the, yeah, they did lots of different things. I mean, the work experience programs kind of like the volunteer program, apart from obviously they're with us for like a week and get to try lots of different things. So yeah, they are great. Next one is open days. I'm sure a lot of you have done an open day or two in your time. Um, I feel like this is a great way of meeting people face to face, especially post pandemic. Um, we've had great turnouts, ours better than I think we'd had before the pandemic, mostly because people are just so keen to come out and see someone face to face. <laughs> um, so recently we did a site open day, which obviously we had to agree with the contractor and had lots of health and safety things to jump through. <laughs> um, but we had lots of finds out. We obviously took finds from the site itself, talked about what, what had been found previously, sort of prior our excavations, and then what we'd found on the site. Um, and that, yeah, like I say, that was that sold out, I think, in 24 hours. We had free tickets online, and they'd sold out within 24 hours. So we thought that was, that was a good sign. And we opened a second day, which then also sold out. <laughs> so it's a good sign. <laughs> um, we also did an archaeology open day, aimed more at children. Um, that's... I think a really important one, trying to I include children in the sort of engagement process. Obviously, archaeology is uh, struggling a little bit, maybe in the school system. I know it lost its college funding a few years ago, and in the universities, it's not looking, not looking so great. So I think it's it's important to find things that target children who love archaeology and are so interested um, and could grow up to be sort of the next generation. I also started uh, the Washathon initiative, <laughs> which is um, basically lots of volunteers coming in to do finds washing. And it's been amazing. I only scheduled one to begin with. I, I wanted to invite people, members of the general public, um, members of our, our friends of Colchester Archaeological Trust, come in and try washing some Roman finds. Um, the staff, experienced volunteers will be there with you. We're going to support you, teach you how to do it, but come and just get hands on with some archaeology. 
and um, I scheduled one and I've run nine <laughs> over the last five months because uh, I don't want to say they threatened me, but they did say if I stopped running them, they'd be very upset. So I have continued to run them all throughout the summer. And um, yeah, the uptake's been outstanding. Obviously, it helped us out because, you know, we had lots of fines to wash and we had quite a big backlog from COVID. So, you know, it did help us out. But the primary aim of it was to engage the public, people that wouldn't normally be able to get hands on with archaeology. They could just come in, have a go, ask lots of questions. And um, then we'd have specialists on site to come down, talk through some of the, the cooler things that they found. Um, a favourite was poor prints on tile. But um, yeah, so that's another way we've been doing it. There's some pictures of my volunteers also all happy to be in the pictures. <laughs> this is also my mum. She's going to be really glad I put this on here. <laughs> um, so yeah, a range of people. Some of them returned for all of the wash thons, which wasn't really the point, but it worked amazingly well. And some of them just came once and just gave it a go and next time brought husband, wife, child. I met lots of families. Other thing is um, community talks. I go out and do a lot of these. I don't really know how it happened, being that I'm supposed to be based at the office, but I do tend to pop out nowadays, um, speak at conferences <laughs> um, and for small community groups, just about archaeology in general. Um, one thing people like to hear about a lot is my life as an archaeologist, which I never thought people would be that interested in, considering I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a, a specialist in anything, so I, I didn't really think people would be that interested, but that is the number one talk that I get asked for. So I go out a lot for that. Um, and yeah, I, we also do small specialist talks, but that's, that's not necessarily me that does that. But I think going out into community groups gives you that personable approach. Um, just one person going out, I get asked so many questions all the time. The other week I went out for a talk that started at eight and I got home at 20 to midnight. <laughs> There's so many questions. Um, but that, that's how you build the engagement, I think, as well. And school workshops, so similar. I go out into schools, I take finds with me always. I think that the children handling is a big thing. Um, I talk about sites that are relevant to the schools. So I recently went to a site, a school that was based next to an archaeological site we were working on. And we looked into whether we could take them on a site visit, but there were too many children at the school and the site wasn't big enough. So we had to think of another option. So this isn't that talk, but I went and gave a talk on the site, took finds from the site, explained how we do archaeology, why we do archaeology, you know, and then I explained the concept of an archive and what all the finds were and that we're going to have 500 boxes of them if they ever want to come back and see them another time. Um, the other thing, we're really lucky, we have a little visitor centre um, based in our building. So I know that not everyone has the, the facility for this, but another great way to engage people is to create a little display. Um, the way our archives work is because we're an archaeological unit, obviously they're only temporarily with us, we don't own them. So um, the, the displays are always temporary. And once we, you know, we deposit the archive, obviously the display moves on. So there's a, a quicker display turnover than probably in the museum or somewhere like that. Um, but for example, you can see us there, we make everything ourselves, it's, it's great fun. But also the finds that are on there, we're not planning to deposit until next year. So they would have just sat in our archiving store probably for the next year. But it's one of people's favourite exhibitions when they come round, which make, you know, it makes it really worth it. And also it make it, they, we put it in basic terms. So rather than in the reports, where obviously it's aimed a little bit higher, the exhibitions are a bit more accessible just for like the everyday person. The other thing is social media. You might have seen me tweeting today. I'm not being rude, I promise, I am tweeting. Um, but also for Cat, I run the social media. So when I started, that was something I was really keen to excel at because we only had Facebook and uh, we didn't actually have an Instagram or a LinkedIn. So I was keen for us to get an Instagram and a LinkedIn because I feel like, especially younger people don't really use Facebook anymore. I know that a lot of my students that come for work experience, they weren't using Facebook. They said, you know, why don't you have Instagram or TikTok? And I said, oh, I don't really know how to work TikTok. So we'll start with, we'll start with Instagram. Um, so we post sort of um, three times a week. We do a f hashtag Finds Friday and a hashtag Throwback Thursday. I don't know if I've posted one. Oh, there you go. This is a throwback Thursday. And I think that's the one that really engages with the archives, especially the older ones, because we talk about sites, we pick key finds. Um, 
we just tell people a little bit about what's been found around them and a lot of the time people have no idea that it's been there and they say where exactly was it and I say I can't tell you <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, but this is just one example and we post that every week and I started it when I got COVID in June um, but since then it, it's actually gained you know not a huge following but just like a little one and it's something that also our work experience and volunteers get involved in so it's more of like a community project not just me there typing out every week like hello it's Vicky again <laughs> but it's everyone's a bit involved with it and then collaborative projects so this isn't one that I personally worked on this is a little bit before my time at CAT but this mosaic here was made by school students, staff, volunteers. Um, there was some funding gained. I think it says on there the amount somewhere up there. The funding was gained. And um, basically over a period of two years, it was led by um, Peter Herring and they created a mosaic to go at the site of the Roman circus. And it's huge, if you can't tell, this isn't even the whole thing. Great for pictures, first of all, but um, it's just an amazing community project that I think the schools especially were really keen to get involved in. I think they had a workshop at one of the schools and when it went up, everyone came to look at it and see it. And it, it's just one of those projects that's just really nice, I think. And I'd like to do something like that again. Although I don't know if I could stomach 200,000 tiny tiles on a mosaic, but something like that on a smaller scale, maybe. And that's, that's all that we do, I say that. There are other things we do, but that's sort of the general gist. Um, so I just picked up a couple of examples of things other people do, so it's not all about me. <laughs> so first of all, I don't know if any of you are familiar with this project. Um, sorry if anyone is and I completely butcher what it's about. Um, but this is, this is something that I saw online, I think a few years ago, it might have been during the pandemic that I saw this, run by the University of Suff Sussex. I said Suffolk. Um, they also gained a little bit of funding but the idea was to really engage the community with their archives. They did a multitude of things, as you can see on here, I won't bother reading it out, but they had over 500 people within the community taking part in this project. Um, and then they put, yeah, put exhibitions on, they held workshops and things like that to talk about archives. This whole huge community event where they just found different ways, the radio program I'd like to listen to, but I haven't, so I can't tell you, can't tell you what it's like. Um, but the other thing was volunteers being taught about archives and then meeting up with other volunteers, uh, other members of the public and teaching them about things. So I think this is just one example of obviously them gaining some funding and being able to do a huge scale community project. And obviously this will be available afterwards if you want to read the whole thing. But I just thought it was really interesting and obviously something that I'd aspire to have a go at myself if I was lucky enough to get some funding. The other thing is Archives Alive, so it's based at Newcastle University. And what I found really interesting about this is it's all online, so it's lots of online resources sort of aimed at different school groups, um, and adults as well, but I think I've just picked the school group one, and um, aimed in different key stages. They also do in-person um, workshops as well, but I, I found this really interesting and something that I think we could do better because we don't have a huge sort of... We have a little online presence with the social media, but nothing like this. So I, I found this brilliant sort of online resources directed for children. Then the last one, your dig. My manager used to work here, so when I said I was going to put it on here, she said, oh, that's great. Um, but what I find really interesting about this is that they put on their own exhibitions, they have their own exhibition space where they talk about different archives, different finds. Um, I know they also have a, a mock dig pit where children can go and <laughs> dig up finds, but I didn't quite include that, but I think that's really cool as well. Um, but just, yeah, it allows the communities to showcase their work and any community projects that are going on, so they make the exhibitions themselves. So I thought that was really amazing as well. Mm -hmm.